it's Batman time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today we're going to have a look at the McFarlane Toys Batman designed by Todd McFarlane. That is really the entire story. I don't need to tell you much more about it. There's original artwork by Todd McFarlane, the man himself, delivering his own version of Batman. There's a lot of wonky stuff to this one and a lot of interesting ones. So, without further ado, I want to have a look at the nitty gritty of this Todd McFarlane Batman. Okay, I gotta be honest, this thing is super wonky. And if you're just looking at this design and you're like saying, no, never in a million years, I can understand it. But that's just part of the fun for me. Like the wonkiness, the uniqueness of it is what attracts me. He stands at about 19 centimeters to the top of his head, uh, a little over 19 and a half if you're counting the bat ears, almost going up to 20 centimeters. So that goes seven, almost seven, four inches tall for your size comparisons we have he is jolter the malfax stupidly huge cape batman he is an old one the dc collectibles new adventures batman and dark side so yeah for the sake of the review i did take the accessories off just now but uh let's have a look at the head sculpt he looks old he looks old he looks rugged the, i don't like the little bit of white in his eyes it looks i guess more realistic and that was the idea of the head sculpt, but it just looks kind of weird, I don't know. I'm not really complaining about it, it's just something that's different. And either you like it or you don't, so I'm not, I'm not hating on it, it's just weird. His head seems almost there, like there's some dents in it, but that's just the, the nature of how the cowl is molded and you even have some ear detail on the side. Now you have the big shiny bat symbol in the front of the chest, which I love personally. I love the design of the bat symbol with the cape connected immediately to it with these kind of hooks on the shoulder pads. That's another look for Batman I like very much. You have a long cape with some holsters for his blades, which I took out. And it comes like this out of the packaging. And I would say, depending on what you prefer, if you heat this up with a hairdryer, I think you can just move it out. I haven't really gotten around to it and I haven't really decided if I wanted to have it folded up like that or if I want to move it out. But it just came down like that in the packaging and it's kind of squeezed in there so I'm guessing that's not really intentional. Now the entire torso is... Uh, that's where it kind of starts to, to come apart for me because this torso, he's thick, he's like wide, the torso is just like... Meat Sausage Deluxe. Yeah, there, there's like no shape to it. It's just big. He's big, all right? And it's more like a, a Dark Knight Returns vibe I'm getting from it, especially looking at the face. He looks more rugged. He's a, he's wider. He's a little bit more muscly. So, I, you know, it's a, it's a different design. I'm not hating on it. Then you have the uh, some pouches on his um, bicep belt, I guess. You got some more spikes on the front of his outfit and some more spikes on the side. Really a lot of spiky stuff going on and the armored forearm plates look pretty good. The, once again, I don't like how McFarlane Toys does it with the bone joint. It does stick out too much. It would have really benefited if they just pushed it in into the forearm really. Then you have the bat symbol with some yellow in the back, which I like. That's like the classic Batman design, which I've always been a fan of it. Then you have some more blades, which are soft plastic. As such, they are bent a little bit, but if you make it hard plastic, you know, it will hinder the articulation, it will hinder the leg movement. I have some battering stored in there, also in a gold. And tons and tons of pouches in brown, black. So by the way, the blades, they are just painted in the front, not in the back, which makes it look weird if you look at it from an angle. But then again, it's like a, such a small detail, I'm not hating on it. Then you have the back of it, which just has a big belt and a big butt. And like a really detailed butt, Jesus. So yeah, it's... But time! Bad butt. And you have some plates on his thighs. Some more armored stuff that looks pretty good. And some more detail in the outfit. And another pouch riddled belt goes around the thigh. Even with some grenades on there. The feet. And overall the lower part of the legs. Is it just me or is this not lined up correctly? It's one of these things that with the McFarlane toys it keeps happening. Also like the, uh, the knee pads have a different color than the rest of it. This one moves somewhat out to the side and then it goes down like that, right? This does not line up with the lower part of the leg. As such, it gives a little bit of a weird vibe from it, like he has his knees just kind of cracked to the side. 
and that's just weird and that's a that's a quality control issue which they should have really had a better look at that I love however the armor plates in the lower legs that looks pretty cool I guess they were just like nobody's gonna notice that because this looks pretty cool and I gotta give them that it does look pretty cool but yeah it's just it's a weird design and it has some weird things going on. But what does all of that mean for the articulation? Well, the head is actually pretty nice. It goes to the back, does go forward, you can really pull it down. That's actually pretty fantastic. Moves side to side, same thing, and does go all the way around without any trouble. Shoulder articulation, nice and ratchet. You can rotate it in the socket over there, bring it around, all the way around, and then you have a bicep swivel. Let me hold on to the shoulder itself and the double hinged elbow which just looks horrible. What did they do here? I get, I like the shoulder pad, but boy, why is this hollowed out like that? That is, ugh, ugly. Also, he cannot straighten out his shoulder as such because of the shoulder pad, so that is really weird engineering, which I do not agree. If you have the ball hinge in there, goes back and forth, has nothing hindering it because it sticks out too much. Rotation in there. Nothing really going on in the chest except for swivels. Because you can rotate it around, but there's barely any back and forth motion. You can pull it a little bit, but it doesn't really keep the pose. Same with lower part, it's actually much more of a swivel. And mine is just super heavily, kind of stuck. It does work now, oh there we go. And has some back and forth motion. It is a little bit better because the crotch piece is soft plastic. And we have the legs. This one keeps disconnecting by the way, I have trouble with that. So let me try the other one, goes forward without disconnecting, luckily, goes to the back, does move out to the side and also has some rotations on there and then you have the double hinged knee, which again doesn't look great but it does get the job done, I guess it's less ugly than the elbow but you don't have to move it all the way up obviously we don't have a swivel at the boot unfortunately and then you have the ball hinge and the foot goes up down beautiful pivot and a toe hinge which goes all the way up for the accessories there's not really that much to speak of but we'll still have a look at it anyway you have these small daggers small blades soft plastic rubbery does not get broken up and then you have his goggles which looks super weird steampunkish I love the detail though in it and even like the painted detail on the little things over there it doesn't line up completely but still it is nicely done a little bit of a weathering effect on it which is very much appreciated and as I shown you at the beginning well not really shown you but as of the beginning of the review I just had it on his forehead but you can obviously also bring it all the way down so it covers up his eyes and gives you more of a steampunk vibe Batman, which kind of is like the, the outfit. Well, it's kind of like Mad Max-ish, if you're asking me. And as for all these McFarlane releases, you also get a card from the artwork from Tom McFarlane with somebody you can pause to read if you like to. And also you get a base with a pack on it, which a lot of people are like, this does nothing. It helps, it helps some with a little bit with the stability, so it's all right. And it's gonna bring me to the final thoughts for this Todd McFarlane Batman. And I, as I mentioned, this design is wonky, but it keeps growing on me. The more I play around with him, the more I like it. Now that besides, the figure looks pretty good. There's a ton of detail on it. The mold is very clean, except for the weird part, elbow parts, knee parts, and then the not so straight boots. That is quality control issues and it does really hamper the figure a little bit and I wish there was a red ring effect on the gray. It looks really plasticky. But beside that, it is nicely executed and at the end of the day though, this is probably not recommended if you don't like the design and I can totally see why you wouldn't because it's wonky. I said that like a billion times so I'm stopping. As such, the figure in general is alright. There's nothing completely broken about it, but it does have some weird parts, it does have some questionable things. So, only recommend it if you like the design, but anybody else, this is an easy skip from the McFarlane line, sorry, but they have had some way better releases than this one, so... I still love it though, I gotta be honest. But that's gonna do it guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever Batman wants. Like, not these ugly elbow and knee pads. Awful.